<laughs> Good morning, colleagues, mentors, and advisory, members of the advisory board. My name is Claudio Book. I'm from Mozambique, and I'll be presenting on behalf of the Mozambique team on our project, which is titled Smart Ecosystem for Innovation, Technology, and Knowledge Growth in Mozambique. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, Mozambique is on the southeast coast of Africa, just above South Africa. So we've seen that the developed world has grown, grown over the centuries in terms of industrialization. They've gone through industrial revolutions which have combined technology and people to meet the world's growing demands. What we find in Mozambique is that our people are still not skilled enough to meet or to match the capacities of the technology. This creates a gap. And the gap of education and service delivery is increasing. And Mozambicans will continue to be excluded from the global economy if our people are not skilled enough to meet those needs. This is where our project comes in, the Smart Ecosystem Project. We bridge the gap between technology and people. Our main objective is to create a digital platform that enables uh, knowledge and technology transfer from global industry leaders to talents and manufacturing industry in Mozambique. The result of our project would be to expand the internet access in the country, uh, to disseminate messages, raise awareness, and educate people on the global technology mega trends and on the increasing opportunities uh, for employment. We'd also like to promote inclusive development uh, through our project. This is innovative in the sense that uh, online learning tools have not been developed in Mozambique. They're fairly novel. And through this web-based tool, we can have a bigger reach of people at a smaller cost. This online learning will be complemented by thematic workshops and laboratories to increase the know-how of our people. So where do we then to our digital platform? Missing link between the large industrial players who are active in the country and the people. We target potential customers like industry uh, extractive industry leaders, uh, technology manufacturers, industry specialists, and academia to transfer this knowledge to the community at large, secondary school students, university students, and the local manufacturing industry. Now a little bit more about Mozambique. So we are a country of 30 million people, mostly living in rural areas, 68%. Uh, our GDP per capita is about 450 uh, in 2017. Most of the households don't actually have access to electricity, it's only 28%, and only 11% of the households have access to the internet. So you can imagine that infrastructure is a large challenge in our country. We've chosen three particular provinces where we would have our project works, which is Cabo Delgado, Tet, and Yamban provinces. This is because this is where most of the mining and extractive activities that are promoting development are located. We, the four project team members, live in Maputo, so this will probably be a good place to hold the workshops and to communicate with uh, these industry players. So why now? Uh, Mozambique is blessed, I believe, with uh, natural resources, in particular the large gas reserves. And Production has been occurring at a small scale, but with minimal benefits to the Mozambicans. Uh, primarily because they're not skilled enough to be employed by the companies that come in. And we expect a large uh, investment in 2022 in terms of exploration and production of gas reserves. And if we don't upskill our people and we don't prepare ourselves, we will miss this opportunity once again. So we've identified some key partners and targets for our project. Our key partners are basically split into two, which are the financial sponsors and the technical sponsors. The financial sponsors are people who could potentially give us money to start this project. Uh, we believe we've got value to add, so we're not afraid of competing and call for funds and things like that, but having some grant money could ease our process and start our process. The technical sponsors are the people who would help us develop uh, the content for the online learning, for the workshops, and to 
uh, help us develop the laboratories that we want to develop in our ecosystem. Our targets, have, as I mentioned early, earlier, is the community at large, secondary schools, universities, and the local manufacturing industry. So our key resources, or what we need to make this project actually happen, first of all is ICT infrastructure. Internet will be very important for delivering the online learnings. Then the MOOCs and workshops are the actual contents that we'll deliver uh, to, to the people. And laboratories, we thought it would be a good uh, idea to have some practical know-how for the learners in secondary schools. These three components make up this smart ecosystem that we've been mentioning. And it's not just an online tool, it's a combination of an online tool with other resources to make the learning more uh, enticing and more inviting. We've split our project into f uh, five work packages. Uh, the project management package and the expansion of ICT infrastructure package form the umbrella in which the other three could fall in. Uh, we see here a name, MORNET. MORNET stands for Mozambique Research and Education Network. It's an existing uh, fiber optic infrastructure which connects about 145 institutions at the moment and it's run by a real company. It's government owned. And the idea of Work Package 2 is to expand this network to have a larger reach so we can uh, have access to more learners, more university students and more institutions. Uh, the other three packages are fairly similar. They differ in targets, but the approach is fairly much the same. It's to provide MOOCs and uh, workshops to students uh, at different levels of the education. Again, uh, the work package too, which is the infrastructure package, would uh, basically benefit all three targets. While Work Package 3 would uh, focus on digitalization, energy efficiency, and uh, NPR for uh, local industry, Package 4 would look at digitalization, energy access, and efficiency, and NPR for universities. And last but not least, Work Package 5 would look at ICT laboratories, digitalization, Internet of Things for agriculture, and energy access for efficiency. You'll see that some topics are transversal for all beneficiaries like energy, NPR, digitalization. But the idea is to tailor the messages to suit different age groups and different levels of education. We have a project timeline which is not very visible here, but I'll try to explain. Uh, we foresee that the project would take about 24 months to develop. This includes 20 months of uh, development of the ICT infrastructure for procurement and construction of ICT infrastructure. Uh, the other three packages, package three, four, and five, which are for the university students and local industry, could run in parallel. Uh, what we'd need to do is, uh, at an initial stage, would be a learning needs assessment workshop where we'd identify the needs uh, of the people who we're trying to target. So for example, for schools, we'd understand what their basic needs are in terms of STEM, and we would tailor the MOOCs and workshops to suit those needs. We did a bit of a SWOT analysis, but I'm conscious of time, so I'll just speak about the weaknesses and threats, uh, which will then lead us to our risk assessment. So some of the weaknesses that we see is that it's fairly dependent on the more net, uh, network. If the network crashes or has uh, difficulty, we'd have to find some mitigation measures or backups to, to ensure that the learning can carry on. It's also dependent on government support. More net is a government institution, so we can't just go and expand the network as we like. We need their consent. Uh, some of the threats is no adherence from targets. Uh, in other words, the Mozambicans don't actually want to access this learning. They don't want to be uh, educated and uh, no, no adherence from the partners. We don't find partners to either support us financially or technically. But we've got some mitigation measures that I'll show in the next slide. So basically, uh, the biggest risks that we found is the unavailability of the infrastructure. And we thought that through maintaining some of the online videos on a hard disk or on a local server, we can mitigate this risk because people would have access to some of the information, although not all of it. Also, no adherence from financial partners. Uh, we realize that the project is quite large in terms of infrastructure, but we can break it down a little bit more, split it into 
specific packages to make it more attractive for financiers. Maybe the company can even finance part of it on its own. Uh, so in all, we find that the risk level for this project is fairly low as far as we understand and we, it can be implemented within the given timelines. Our team is made up of uh, multidisciplinary staff members uh, that have multiple value to add. Uh, we have knowledge of the local conditions. We are Mozambicans. Uh, we have expertise in the fields of ICT, economics, energy, and engineering, which will help in project development. We also have professional experience in academia, public, private sector. Uh, but most importantly, we have direct access to the stakeholders. So one of our team members, Mr. Shimane, is the CEO of MoreNet. So when it comes to expanding the network and adding content to the website, we've got direct access and people who we can talk to to make this happen. Uh, another one of our team members is the Dean of the Faculty of Economics at Universidad de Duarte Mondlan, which is the biggest university in Mozambique. So when we want to create uh, networks with the university, we have the doors to go through to make this happen. Uh, of course, all of this comes at a price. We've prepared a very rough estimate budget of one and a half million dollars. Uh, you'll see that work package two is the most expensive, it's infrastructure, and we aimed it at about one million dollars. I think the most important thing in this slide is not the numbers, but the fact that uh, we can run these packages. The packages are interrelated, of course, but they're not interdependent. So we can run package three, four, and five on their own without necessarily having to expand the network. So we are not waiting for a grant of one and a half million dollars to start our project. We can start way before. With that, I'd like to say thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for listening. Uh, we are open to questions, and hopefully we'll see you in a few months' time with a more developed project idea. Thank you.